<laughs> red on red on red and technically also on red, but that would require me to show something that would not be deemed suitable for young children. <laughs> so, uh, let's see, what would be my low, my high, my act of kindness? Um, I guess my low right now would be, I actually have to think about this because nothing inherently bad happened yesterday. Uh, well, okay, full disclosure, like, I'm finally able to watch Centaur World Season 2, yay, but I wanted to watch more of it than what I wound up doing yesterday, so I guess the low is the fact that now I'm going to have to play catch up because I really would like to have to sh talk about that tomorrow, although, if you want a sneak peek, I love it so far. Anyway, um, yeah, you know what? My high is the fact that so far since I've been watching Centaur World Season 2, I love it. It's been great. I don't want to give away too much yet. You know, like, just know that right now, I love it. I can't wait to talk about it more tomorrow. If I can, because, well, I could binge watch the rest throughout the course of the day. Yeah, I'll be able to do that. Okay. I mean, it's Saturday. Perfect day to do it, right? Um, and my act of kindness was I uh, chauffeured my uh, grandmother and ran some uh, errands for her. So that was very nice. And uh, whenever I visit my folks on Fridays, I uh, beat them to their place before they get back from work. So I prepared the house for them a little bit. Nothing much. Just like... Um, Really, all I do is, uh, because they have their Christmas lights set up, and we are in that time of year where it gets darker earlier. So I turn on the Christmas lights for them. And, uh, my mom, it was my mom's idea. She got, like, uh, three of those, like, giant reindeer front lawn things. It's actually, it actually does look really nice. I mean, I think... It's one of those, I think it's honestly one of those impulse buys that a lot of us get. Yeah, it happens to all of us, but I get it, it's cool. Plus, again, it does look nice, and it's not like they're not using it. They are legitimately using it. That, thanks to me plugging it in, I, I used it last night, so. I guess in a way, technically, I used it, but. That's, a that, that, that's semantics. So, uh, good morning, and. Happy Saturday, everyone. Um, well, what do I talk? Well, it has been a good while since I uh, did a, well, I technically did a movies of my youth yesterday because, you know, the uh, MCU Spider Man movies. But, well, I did say I was going to do something like this more often. The question is, I can't really think of a movie to talk about. I mean, actually, you know what? I do have one I can talk about. Because this is a movie that I watched, like, religiously when I was a little kid. Like, this is the kind of movie that I loved so much growing up that in a day and age where the internet definitely exists and social media exists and critics are able to voice their opinions on stuff every now and again, it honestly terrified me that like a movie that I really liked growing up would be considered, you know, bad. And don't get me wrong, if you think, if you think any movie is bad, by all accounts, you know, you have every right to, uh, you have every right to have your opinion. That's, you know, it's your opinion is your own. It's not me to judge otherwise. But I finally looked up Rod Scott, but a few years ago, I finally looked up this movie's rating on Rotten Tomatoes. And, okay, sometimes Rotten Tomatoes is really stupid because there are movies that are good that only have like a 60% rating. And if you don't know on Rotten Tomatoes, 60% or higher is considered fresh, and anything below that is, you know, considered rotten. In a way, it's kind of like how school works. 
Oh, well, based on this based on percentages. And so this movie was like at 60 for a long time, but then years later, some critics said they didn't like it and it brought it down to 59. And that just devastated me because before that happened, I had seen a lot of people, people that I like, like Doug Walker and the Walker, like the Walker brothers, like those guys, they really like this movie. In fact, they considered it an all time classic. That movie is The Sandlot. Yep, I love that movie. I must have seen that movie front to back like a hundred times. Love it so. I mean, if you don't know what The Sandlot is, it's um, uh, a, new, a new kid in the area. His nickname is Smalls. Well, his last name is Smalls. Scotty Smalls. And he moves in. He's a really smart kid, but you know, he moves to his new, but he moves around a lot. And he shows up to his new school, his new area, right before summer begins, which is not a very, which, is an almost impossible amount of time for you to make any friends before the summer. But he does start growing a bit of an interest in baseball, especially when he sees these kids go to this one mysterious um, baseball field called the Sandlot. And there's one kid, his name is Benny Rodriguez, who, you know, befriends him, sort of takes him under his wing. And here's the thing, by all accounts, Smalls, that's why I'll be calling him, I'll be calling him small, so I'll be for the duration of this video. He is a very smart kid, absolutely. But he's one of those, you know, very smart up here, but not, you know, street smart out there type sort of thing. I mean, he doesn't even know how to throw a baseball at the beginning of this movie. That, that should tell you something right there. But as the movie goes on, he definitely comes out of his shell. He does start to learn a lot. And, you know, you really do see the, a great character. And honestly, I think it's one of the great... Kind of thing that it may be one of, like, the greatest character arcs I had ever seen when I was a kid. I mean, again, he had, like, a variable, like, new kid. And then he becomes, you know, accepted by... Well, I shouldn't say accepted because he really wasn't, like, scrutinized or anything. But... You know, he, he finally has friends and he's happy and that's really cool. But that really is like a brief summarization of that movie. Because, you know, they just, throughout the summer, they go play baseball at the Sandlot and, you know, adventures happen. Including the biggest quote-unquote pickle they would ever been in. If you don't know the movie, um, Smalls' dad has a baseball signed by Babe Ruth. If you don't know who Babe Ruth is, don't worry, I'll actually be nice here. I'm not going to scrutinize you for not knowing who Babe Ruth is. But Babe Ruth was an MLB player who played for first the Boston Red Sox and then for the Yankees. He is considered quite possibly the greatest baseball player to have ever played the game. Not just for his day, but for all time too. So, to have anything signed by Babe Ruth and to accidentally hit it over the fence where there's a giant dog and they're trying to get the ball back, yeah, it's pretty major. There are so many iconic things about that movie that even now, if I were to close my eyes, I can literally picture like all of the best scenes. You know, the camp out in the treehouse, all the, the pool scene. Where uh, Squints is trying to, you know, get mouth to mouth with the lifeguard, Wendy Peppercorn. Um, the baseball game that they had against these guys that by all accounts look better, but the guys in the sandline are just better. And then later they go to the carnival, eat, try chewing tobacco for the first time and throw up on the turtle, tilt the world. No kidding. That was the first time I had ever heard the song Tequila. I actually really like that song. That's a good song. Uh, I, I almost want to sing it right now, but I don't want to get like flagged or whatever. So I'm watching this movie and well, cause it was on the other night. I, I was actually watching it um, with my dad. We had a ball. It was great. I loved it. And uh, 
it's really hard. I guess my favorite scene is probably like the final climax of the movie where in order to get the ball back, you know, Benny jumps over the fence, gets the ball and, you know, runs out and gets and the dog jumps over the fence and just runs. They run all the time. Seriously, Benny probably ran probably in the span of like, I mean, yeah, it's a movie, so you're supposed to have a special disbelief, but I guarantee that kid probably ran like 10 miles in like the span of an afternoon, which, yeah, I've ran 10 miles before, but that's because I was in shape and I was already an adult when I did that. This guy did it for like, he's probably entering middle school right now or something. Like, bro, that's awesome. And you know, eventually you get the ball back and the guy who owns the beast, played by James Earl Jones, you know, he actually has, you know, a ball that's not only really signed by Babe Ruth, but the rest of the 1927 Yankees. So, you know, eventually you get the ball back and everything's fine and, you know, the story, I mean, technically, yeah. The ending is kind of sad if you really want to put it into perspective just because, I mean, eventually the kids of the Sandlot had to grow up. You know, they had to move on, have careers, have families. I mean, yeah, they kept in touch, but in a way it's kind of heartbreaking when you realize this group of friends is going to have to be broken up by something eventually. And that something was life itself. And yeah, it is a lesson about life. Because people do come and go, but you'll always remember the good people. And you should always stick by the good people. At least that's, you know, what I get out of it. And not to mention all the best quotes. I mean, do I even need to talk about your killing me, Small? You know. And all the other classics, like, um, uh, My Life Was Over. <laughs> Stuff like that. It was, I mean, there are some things I could say, but, uh, they're a little bit, um, risque for kids to hear, you know? Nothing. Nothing sexual or nothing sexual or anything, just like, you know, profound, profanity, curse words like that. Uh, I honestly never forget the first time I saw the Tilt the World scene, too. First time I ever saw that when I was a kid, that was probably one of the hardest I'd ever laughed ever. <laughs> yeah, I know it's horrible under the, uh, when you know the ramifications of it all, but it's still funny to me. It is. It is a good movie with a lot of heart, too. It is. And this is the kind of movie where you really don't have to take my word for it. I mean, I already mentioned how Doug Walker of Nostalgia Critic fame mentioned it was an all-time classic. That's enough. That's definitely enough uh, praise for me. But I say all the critics I've seen praise this movie. And you know what? I'm gonna give a huge. This, this will be today's YouTube shout out, by the way. I gotta give it to Chris Stuckman because. And if you don't know who Chris Stuckman is, he is a movie critic, and he'll usually grade a movie, you know, giving a movie letter grade. And he's seen. I mean, I mean, I imagine how I've seen the Sandlot like over a hundred times. The number of times he's probably seen that movie. Completely trumps mine by a long shot. And yet, as much as he loves that movie, he actually couldn't give it a grade at all. Really. Like, nothing. I mean, well, here's the thing. He didn't want to grade it. He did say that if, it, that if he did give it a grade, it'd be an A+, plus, which is very good. Not a lot of movies he grades. Not a lot of movies that... He, um, reviews do get A-pluses. In fact, some notable A-pluses would include Forrest Gump. He gave that one an A-plus. Shawshank Redemption, that was another one. I think he gave it to Misery as well. Um, Mad Max Fury Road, that was another one. Whiplash, 
That, that's another A plus. Well, okay, yeah, I know. I know it sounds like I'm listing movies he's given A plus to, but but trust me, he doesn't do it that often. In fact, I mentioned Mad Max Fury Road. That was the only A plus he gave out in all of 2015. Really? Did he give an A plus to Silas too? I forget. I know one movie he definitely gave an A plus to. And it was why I ultimately confirmed why this movie is S tier. Yes, he gave an A, he gave an A plus to Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part Two. I I think my face hurt from smiling after that so much. But yeah, I'm, I'm getting hit myself. Yeah, so The Sandlot, very good movie. If you're a baseball fan, I highly recommend it. If you're a sports movie fan, I highly recommend it. If you want if you want to watch a summer movie, I would recommend it. You know, honestly, it's hard for me to not recommend this movie. Because it's that good, you know? And, yeah, I can, there is literally, I'm like scratching the surface of how good this movie is. Really, and truly. Like, you know, one of these days I would like to do a Mount Rushmore of my sports movies. I'm putting Sandlot in there for sure. Probably Sandlot. Remember the Titans. Well, that's two for now. I'll have to, I'll have to see about, I'll have to see about the rest. But yeah, there you go. So yeah, so if you couldn't tell, I recommend you watch Remember the Titans too. I'll talk about that another time. Like, favorite, share, subscribe, and follow me, subscribe for Asian YouTube. I'm very home this video for all of you guys who watch your video. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful Saturday. Remember, you're going to talk to you in the Take care and make good choices. See ya.